How's my mustache look? Really big. Nice. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really getting this shot, okay? I'm really stoked. I gotta pick the best looking fern. That's really the, that's really the trick to fern photography. You look at their stripes and edges. Holy crap, there's so much detail on that pro raw shot. What's going on everybody? Today we are out here in the woods uh, to take some photos and we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max because today Apple Pro Raw just came out. Super excited to take a look at this format. And so we're gonna do a direct comparison between Pro Raw and JPEG to see if the hype is really there and if Pro Raw actually looks really good uh, and see how much you can edit, edit the files versus JPEG. So do a nice comparison. We got a good scene out here, but I did also wanna let you know, linked in the description is a link to our Pro Camera app. Our app team has been on their toes and Pro Raw is now available already in Pro Camera, which is super exciting. So just wanted to put the plug in for our app, already has Pro Raw. So if you enjoy all the manual controls you get from the Moment Pro Camera app, now you have it with Pro Raw if your device supports it. So today I will be shooting the Moment Pro Camera app, but uh, regardless, we're gonna see Pro Raw, how it stacks up versus JPEG and uh, go take some shots. So in the Moment Pro Camera app, all you have to do to switch to Pro Raw if your device supports it is you'll see right here on the top, JPEG, like that's your photo format option. And right over here, there is Pro Raw as the setting, which is pretty cool. So directly accessible right from the camera menu. Also on the menu in the bottom, if you go into that, which is like your full settings option, uh, you will, you'll wanna go down to photo settings and standard image format, that's, for the JPEG or for HEIF, but under RAW format, you actually have the option to shoot in Pro RAW or RAW. RAW was an option that uh, we've had for a little while directly from the sensor. Pro RAW is Apple's special formula, so make sure that's in Pro RAW if you want that. And then for fo processed photo quality, because it's using Deep Fusion and a few other things to get that Pro RAW look, make sure that option is set to quality to give your photo the highest possible quality with the way it's being processed. Uh, let's go down to the water now and shoot a better, prettier shot. This was kind of just some trees, but down there, it's gonna be loud. That's why I did all the talking up here, but let's go, let's go do that. This is very PNW, uh, but luckily it's not raining. So, you know. All right, you wanna see something cool? Make safe. Okay, we have this shot set up right here, vertical. Um, I like how it's looking right there, but I do want Ariana to go on that rock down there so, the and be a one. subject. Yeah, I think so. I'll let you know if it looks weird. Should I leave the backpack here? Uh, yeah, leave the backpack. Thank you for being my model. Mm -hmm. Also, this is so sick. MagSafe clips right on. <laughs> Quick shout out to our first MagSafe prototypes that I've been using. So sick, just snaps right on. Bam, too easy, too fun. Oh, that looks pretty good. Just a classic fern shot. Oh, oh actually this one's fire, dude. It's gonna be a hard battle between Pro Raw and JPEG. They both look pretty good on that shot. Gotta get the coffee. All right. This nice photo of Ariana right here. Bam. Wow, good lighting. All right, it's probably so loud right now because this is raging waterfall is here, but we're gonna do we're gonna get a cool photo, really cool photo in Pro Raw.
So that's gonna wrap up our shooting. Shout out to Ariana for holding the camera for some of it and being in some of the shots. But now I'm actually gonna send these photos to Taylor because she's a much better editor than I am and she's gonna break it down, her editing, and make these look really good and see how Pro Raw really uh, can handle some editing. Shout out to iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max users because it's kind of like you just got a little extra bonus today and you can shoot Pro Raw now. Anyways, link below, Pro Camera app. Here's Taylor. Hello everybody and welcome to California. We are going to be editing all of those photos that Caleb just took and I'm super excited to show you the difference between these JPEGs and these Pro Raw files. So I've uploaded everything into Lightroom, that's where I'll be editing today, and I've basically organized my photos so that the JPEGs are first and then the Pro Raw file is second. So as we go through these, just know JPEG first, Pro Raw second. The Pro Raw files are in a format called DNG, and so let me show you. If you click on a photo and press I when you're in Lightroom, you'll get all the info about the photo right here in the upper right hand corner. So you can see this is a JPEG, and this is really important in the differences between these two files. The JPEG is 6.35 megabits, whereas the DNG or the Pro Raw is 31, a little bit over 31 actually. So the DNG or Pro Raw files are humongous compared to the JPEG. So basically what that tells you is there is a lot more information in this image and there is just a lot more data to give you sort of latitude to edit and post. So I'm gonna take my info away. As you can see, the Pro Raw file is showing up incredibly dark um, and it is for all of them. Uh, the shadows are really deep and the highlights, as you can see, are <laughs> quite blown out. Do not let this discourage you. When I pulled these into Lightroom, this happened and it's just how the software is reading the file. This does not mean that your image is ruined or anything like that. Have no fear. So I am going to lightly edit almost all of the photos that Caleb took. I'm not gonna do anything huge to them. I don't wanna change them too, too much, but I do wanna get those Pro Raw files to a place to where you can actually see the difference between the two, and let's get going. So let's edit this JPEG file. It's gonna be, again, you guys, a really light edit. Um, first, I'm gonna just take the highlights down so where the sun is on the rocks. I'll blow it out so you can see what I'm working with. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. I'm gonna bring my shadows up just a little bit so we can see sort of the dark spot Ariana is standing in. And I really don't want to change too much. I am gonna give it some contrast just to give it somewhat of a punch. So I'm gonna cool it off just a tiny bit. I'm actually gonna take saturation down the slightest bit and then play with my individual colors. So this is where I just sort of play. A good way to know what, what colors are in your image is to take the saturation and just go to the absolute extremes so you can see what you're actually manipulating. Um, so yellow is basically everywhere and I want that a little bit saturated. My greens obviously are huge here and I do want them to be a little brighter and deeper. And I want my sky to go down. All right, so that I'm just manipulating each color just based off of what I see. I'm actually gonna go back to my temperature now that I've changed all that. 
It really is a delicate dance editing a photo. You might change something, but then when you change the next thing, you go back and change the previous thing. You know, it's a, it's a flip-flop. All right, I'm gonna bring those shadows up a little bit more so you can see Ariana. Okay, so that is a decently edited image, very quick as you can see, but to edit all of these, I can't take 20 minutes on each photo. So a good way to see your before and after in Lightroom is to click the slash button right above the return key and you can see the before and after is very subtle, um, mostly up in here. So we're actually just gonna leave that and move on to the Pro Raw because that is of course what we're most interested in. I was playing with these a little bit before I hit record and these DNG files actually read color in a different way. For example, the JPEG file, the river was reading as teal and in the Pro Raw file, it was reading as green. So even the color science is different. So these edits are not going to come out as the same exact thing, but that's not the goal. The goal is just to show you the difference between the two. So just wanted to put that out there. So as you can see, we're working with an incredibly dark image. So your first instinct might be to really kind of skyrocket the exposure. We are gonna do that, but not too much because as you can see, our highlights are just getting completely blown out up here at the top. So we can of course take our highlights down. So again, this is gonna be a dance. Um, another way to take those down is whites. So I'm gonna also take those down and then I'm gonna take my shadows up. This is of course gonna make it quite flat doing all of these extreme toggles. So you sort of need to find your sweet spot and then adding contrast is gonna give it that punch. It's gonna add that punch back in. I'm still really overexposed up here on the cliff. So I'm gonna go into my yellow and bring down my luminance. Cause I know the cliff is registering as yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna leave my oranges alone. Okay. So that might even be a little too dark. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna bring the contrast up. Again, it's a dance. I don't love how that's turning out. My whites and my highlights are down, so that means I just need a lower exposure and then bring up my shadows if I'm trying to brighten the image. Because I don't love those yellows being too deep. It's making that cliffside scary looking. Okay, so that's a much better place. So here was what we started with. <laughs> and here's what we got just by manipulating light and our yellow toggles. So um, again, contrast is gonna bring that punch back in that I kind of took away by removing highlights, removing shadows, removing whites. Um, again, contrast is gonna give you that nice punch. Now our temperature might be able to warm up a little bit. How warm did I keep this one? Oh, this one's, the JPEG's pretty cool actually. So, Let's go cool so they look somewhat similar. I'm actually gonna cool the JPEG, or sorry, warm the JPEG up to about there. And then I'm gonna bring our tint over towards the pinks because it's looking wildly green. Okay. Take a little saturation away and then toggle with my colors.
Okay, so I'm liking how this Pro Raw looks. On its own, it looks really great. Here is what we started with, and here's where we're at. Now, compared to the JPEG, it looks wildly different. Um, some of the colors are different, and there's just a different, I don't even know, there's a different texture to it. So here's what I want to show you. Let's zoom in to the cliff. This is on the JPEG, okay? So here's the JPEG cliff zoomed in, and here is the Pro Raw. It is just so much clearer, and it's not so like chunky. Um, the JPEG looks very chunky to me. I guess chunky is a word for I don't know, pixelated or just like almost like artificially sharp. Um, almost like I took the sharpen toggle and like jacked it up, which I obviously did not do. Um, and so that Pro Raw file, let me brighten it a bit too so you can see it a little more. That Pro Raw file just looks a lot nicer to the eye. There's just clearly way more detail. So as you can see, they, uh, they look quite different. Um, and that Pro Raw just has an insane amount of data in it. Huge difference. Let's move on to the next because we have quite a few images. All right, so here's a incredibly quick edit of this nice fern photo Caleb took. And again, we're gonna see the difference in, in detail by really zooming in on the fern. So here's the JPEG version, certainly not bad by any means, but here is the Pro Raw version. It is crisper in the in-focus parts and there is just so much more detail in each and every one of those little leaves. Oops, let me click back to the JPEG. Look at those leaves. Don't look bad on their own, but when compared to this, this one is clearly the winner. It's clearer, it's more pleasing to the eye. It simply just looks better. And as you can see too, the color science is a little bit different between these images. So be sure to keep that in mind when editing. All right, next is this cute little portrait of Ariana. Here she is on the path. This again is a JPEG. I'm gonna just start by brightening it up and giving it a little contrast. I'm gonna also straighten it out and center her. And I want to warm it up just a little bit and take the highlights down just a little bit. I just want to drop the shadows and give it a little more oomph. All right, so there's your before and there's your after. Really great, simple edit. Now here is the Pro Raw file. Um, literally looks like nothing is there, right? We are going to jack up the exposure, realizing that that might come back down later. I just need to see what I'm working with right now. I'm gonna drop my highlights and my whites. I'm gonna bring up contrast just a bit. I already know my sky is totally blown out and I'm gonna need to drop the luminance in the blues, so I'm just gonna do that now. It is too cool, so I'm gonna warm it up. Starting to look better. That looks great. We're gonna straighten and center. 
All right, so that looks pretty dang good. Um, pretty similar. So I could raise my highlights and then drop my blues. Hmm. I'm pressing Command Z, by the way, to undo the last thing I just did. I'm actually gonna leave my whites up. So the DNG is a little more green. Not that that's bad. I'm just trying to make these look as similar as possible. So I put that at like an eight. All right, let me straighten these so they match up a little more. Okay, so this first image is the JPEG right here, and this is our Pro Raw. They look almost identical when you're looking at it like this. Let's do the pixel peep test. We'll zoom in right on Ariana, put her right in the middle. So here's the JPEG and there's the DNG. If you can see, everything looks smoother and smoother doesn't mean blurry here. Um, it just looks more natural and more soft um, opposed to the chunkier, kind of like clinically sharp JPEG file. So here is our ProRaw file before, um, how it came into Lightroom. And here is the edit showing you just how much room you have to dance around while editing. Um, the data in these bigger files just allows you to pull and stretch your edit that much more. Let's go to the next one. This next one is one of my favorite examples because it is of a running river. You will be able to see at the end of this that the Pro Raw file just gives you so much more information and detail in that running river. So here is our JPEG, not bad to start. Um, I know I wanna give it a little oomph. I may even wanna drop shadows a bit. I don't wanna do too, too much to this. I'm gonna warm it up just a tad. So again, to know what colors you're working with, go to the extreme ends of your toggle and you'll see what you're manipulating better. And then you can back off and make it look more natural. Okay, so on this image, I'm just gonna do something that's definitely not required, but it's gonna bug me if I don't. This little sign, this keep away sign, I can't stand. So I'm gonna take my healing brush and run right over that and just get rid of it. All right, so the river, as you can see, and sky are registering as a highlight, of course, because they are the brightest. So I'm gonna bring that down, give it a little more contrast. All right, so here is the before and here is the after. I, you know what, I actually don't like that being so warm. I'm actually gonna keep it cooled off a bit and I'm gonna raise the exposure a bit as well. Sometimes you think you have it and you don't. All right, so here is the before, here's the after. Very subtle. Here is the Pro Raw file. Again, shooting the exposure up, realizing that that will likely come back down after I work with my highlights and whites. I just need to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna give it some contrast. I need to take that sign away. Bloop. Nope. 
So right off the bat, you can see that there's detail in the water and over in these shadows that just weren't in the JPEG. I will, of course, toggle back and forth to show you that. Need to give this Pro Raw a bit of a pink tint. It was just registering so green. Okay, so we've got the Pro Raw file to a point where it's decent. So let's pixel peep. So here is our JPEG. Let's just zoom in right to like the river and the rocks. So here's the JPEG file. Zoomed right in, take that in, and here is the Pro Raw. JPEG, Pro Raw. It's smoother, it's softer, and if you look at the river, those tiny little details are there all the way back. Um, another place you'll be able to see this is over here, like this bridge. Um, there's just wild detail even in those shadows that I lifted so drastically so let me remind you where we started that's before and that's after all right so next we are going to go to this image of Caleb's cute little house from the outside window so here's our JPEG file there's so many ways we could edit this um, it's really just endless um but i'll probably get rid of that other window just to keep it super clean and i'm just going to crop both right now so i can match them up All right, so that's close enough. So here's our JPEG file. As you can see, it is lit the inside of his house quite fine. And uh, there, again, there's so many ways we could do this. Lifting the shadows is of course gonna show the exterior of the house more. Um, we could go that route, or we could just keep it focusing on what's through the window. Again, who knows? Just for sake of a test, let's raise the shadows so we can see the outside of the house. It'll just make for an interesting um, comparison. Uh, I'm gonna add some contrast in here. I know I want this to be a little bit warmer just because it's Christmas time and we want this to feel festive. His cute little Christmas tree, can we talk about that? So cute. All right, so I'm dropping the highlights a little bit. I don't like it that warm, but I do want it to feel cozy. And I also want to straighten out the house. Okay, so that's pretty dang warm. I'm gonna back off just a wee bit. My camera just turned off. <laughs> All right, so here is the JPEG. We're just gonna pixel peep on this one and zoom in right to see the window up close and everything through it. So here is JPEG and here is Pro Raw. I'm gonna zoom in even more over on this plant right here. That is gonna give you a good idea of a difference. So here is JPEG. And there is Pro Raw. It just, I, I'm trying to think of another word for chunky, but 
That is really all that comes to mind when I see this, whereas the Pro Raw is giving me a nice, smooth, but still sharp and detailed image. All right, so I hope this helped you in seeing the difference between JPEG and Pro Raw. The differences really are huge. It gives you so much more flexibility in post-production. So someone like me who really likes to edit, this was way too fast for me and I will likely go out and shoot some Pro Raw photos and take hours and hours and hours to edit them just because I enjoy it that much. And it's so much fun to sort of stretch your edit and uh, see where you can take your phone images, how crazy that we are at this place just in the tech world, um, really cool thing that Apple did here. So for those of you with the new Pro models of the 12, have a blast with this. Show us what you create, and I would love to see some before and afters over on Twitter. So send some my way, and I will retweet those 100%. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.